Uh, I'm going to talk about again, like you said, the 9 and 5 super pulse laser and treating shingles. We've had some very good results with that and wanted to share. Just the arrows at the bottom. Okay. And no, you can't do the side of the laptop. Mm -hmm. I'm on the laptop. Push the arrows on the laptop. Okay. There we go. These two here. And there's a pointer there, too. And uh, is the uh, disclosure and so forth disclaimer? I do educational consulting for multirinians. Shingles, also known as herpes zoster by most of us, is a very, very painful condition. I don't know how many of you have had it. Uh, word is about in the research that about a third of the population is likely to have it in their lifetime. Uh, it's a blistering, a skin rash, due to the varicella zoster virus also related there in the chicken poxes as well. Many people who have had it will tell you this is the most painful thing they've ever experienced. Prior to me having a laser, my wife had an outbreak of shingles and uh, I like to tell that she's been in uh, nine automobile accidents. She's had cancer, cancer surgery, chemotherapy, broken bone, kidney stone, two children, gallbladder attack, she's married to me, and shingles. <laughs> And she professes shingles is the worst of all of them. It is horrific. I am quite sure it's difficult for her to sit in this room as we talk about shingles and show pictures of shingles. Once you get the virus, you got it. It's going to be there right on and on, which is all the things we're familiar with, and it can activate uh, later in years. It's a prime candidate for patients who are older, over 60, with weakened constitution, weakened immune system, unfortunately. Patients may come down with uh, pneumonia or some type of cancer or some uh, degenerative disease and suddenly break out with a case. Uh, what a curse, horrible thing. Disease and meds can cause that. History of chickenpox prior to age one is another predisposer. It's usually unilateral. Oftentimes there's a tingling and burning that precedes the blistering. Some people will not have the blistering. Classically, there is the blistering, and it usually follows a dermatome, as we can see here. It is rare to have it cross the midline, see so very few cases, and it usually doesn't wrap all the way. So it follows the uh, dermatome, starting from the spine and wrapping around to the front, characterized by the red patches and small blisters. Uh, they can break, develop into sores and fester a little bit, possible site for infection and other things. As they move on for that, for that and begin to heal, there's redness, rash, often itching and it will begin to dry and heal over eventually in most cases. Uh, I've seen patients who've been suffering for eight years with it, usually a few weeks to a month, month and a half is about typical in through there. Some folks we end up with post herpetic neuralgia, uh, PHN, bad stuff. I've treated some cases of that, there's some good literature out that on that, my focus was on acute and to get into that. Everybody's seeing in the US the ads for the vaccinations, they're only about 50% effective. The group that the most effective in is this age group right in through here, and beyond that it begins to fall off, and as we get to be an older and older nation, it's kind of important that we have a good alternative, and low-level laser therapy seems to be offering that. They're also not really aware of the long-term effects or how long the vaccine will last. <coughs> so there's plenty of questions left about this new thing that they're pushing over and over and over on television. Some of the treatments consist of antiviral medications and histamines, steroids, analgesics, and none of them are really particularly effective at all. My rationale for doing this is, well, it's significant pain. And I'm kind of in the pain business, and I wanted to find a thing for relief for these folks. There was a lack of uh, effective treatment options. Low-level laser therapy is certainly safe non-invasive, painless, and it's easy to apply. As I said, there were some papers out there on uh, PHN, uh, several here showing very good response. <coughs> Folks were pain-free after a year, and they had suffered and, and were unresponsive to other treatment types. Uh, more studies again, uh, also working with the Simplex, commonly known as the fever blister. I had the opportunity to treat several patients, and this is an aside that we're having fever blisters, and often in one to two treatments, it's resolved. They usually get some pain, or treat, pain relief with the very first treatment. Also had the good fortune to help a patient who was having genital herpes. 
And in four treatments over a two-day period, which I did not administer, that was outside my scope of practice, I sent him home with a laser, but they were resolved, healed up, pain was gone with the very first treatment. So there's certainly a range of things that can be done with low-level laser, it would appear, for this uh, herpes type issue. On and on for the um, PHN, other cases for patients responded very, very well. Could not find any papers on treating acute cases. So here again, a double blind study, good response, dropping down from a 10 to a 2 for the treatment on the VAS scale. I picked three patients to deal with. They were all acute, one extremely acute that we'll, we'll get into here. And this was all done in my clinic, chiropractic and laser therapy center. Uh, no one was excluded. Of course, if you were going to do this, you would want to follow the normal exclusions of pregnancy or other things like that that you would go through your normal. But I didn't run into any, any uh, pregnant patients or cases that there were any exclusions, so they were all candidates for treatment. I used the super pulse laser again, and that consisted of six diodes and a 905. Also, it has built-in infrared emitting diodes in the broadband. There was four diodes and in the plain red. And here's the frequencies for those, 875 and 670. The frequency I used as far as pulsing, I used a sweep. I wanted to cover a wide range and also vary the depth of the treatment I was using. So I varied my frequency, which is built in from 1,000 to 3,000 hertz. So I was covering an entire area. Also, too, built into this emitter is one magnetic static field, and that's at 35 milliteslas. The technique I used, the scanning technique, was actually hovering over the wound, and I'll show you a picture of that. Contact is real painful. Uh, I have a uh, kind of an impromptu uh, clinical examination I do for a patient who has shingles. I ask them where it hurts. If they don't have the blisters, my test is I will take their clothing and just wiggle it back and forth across the dermis. And if they immediately ask me to stop, I'm 100% sure they got it every single time. Just that stimulation there has caused instant pain. And it is quite a bit of pain. So, if you don't see the rash, try that. It'll be extremely sensitive, much, much more than a sunburn. Uh, also, we're having to treat a, uh, a large area. So the reason I used a, uh, a wide head, what we call a laser shower, falling along the dermatome is very important. I've also found it important not to only treat the area that the rash extends, but to do the entire length of the dermatome, follow all the way around, and I'll discuss that in a moment. Superficial depth of penetration is required because you're working to reach the nerve root and get the area where the rash is involved. What do you mean by nerve root? Is the anatomical definition of nerve root is quite deep. And what do I mean by nerve root? Nerve ending? Yeah, you said the superficial nerve root, but anatomically, the root of the nerve is where it goes into the spinal cord. Well, I'm doing from the root where it exits the spinal cord at the IVF, and I'm following that dermatome all the way around. But it's not superficial. Compared to? Well, it's at the level of spinal cord compared to, it is superficial for what I'm referencing here. Uh, the treatment protocol, I found that uh, in one to two days, the patients were responding and many times immediately and within an hour. You want to scan the affected nerve root, again, follow that dermatome like we were talking about. And I've used a treatment protocol of uh, five, uh, just a 0.5 centimeter off the skin and scanned along. And in these cases, I used a five minute treatment. If you had a larger area and you were scanning at this speed, I'd recommend that you add some time on. But in most cases, I was able to cover the entire affected area in that five minute span with a little time to spare. And here's an example of a gap that I was using. Just put my thumb there to demonstrate the size and how far away it was off the skin. I still recommend not touching the patient. So there is an art to it to just carefully hover across because they will not enjoy being touched. So the joules output information there, there's our totals and fluids. The first case, 62 year old white female, very, very interesting. I'd love to have some more of these. Uh, she was a patient of mine for lower back pain. She was in for lower back pain to be adjusted and to be treated with laser. And she said, I think a bug has bitten me. 
and she pulled her shirt tail up and there was one classic herpetic vesicle. And I asked, did you feel the bug bite you? She said, no. And I knew if that area was that angry, she would have felt what it was that had gotten her. So I felt confident this in fact was shingles and it was the very first blister that had popped up. So I explained to her what was likely going to happen. It was probably going to get worse and I explained to her about the shingles and she did not need to pop that area and so forth. Um, I treated her using the same protocol, that, that 905 with the sweep, and did five minutes, and again did the entire range of the dermatron from the nerve root where it exits all the way to the front, even though she only had one vesicle on the back. Also gave her instructions to call me, here's my cell phone number, here's my home number, here's where I live, here's my pager number, here's how to get hold of me if you have any trouble. I never heard from her. Saw her on Monday. I said, I didn't hear from you. You must have done well. She said, yeah, but check this out. Put her shirt tail out. Uh, she had a full-blown rash all the way from the posterior around to the front that was already in the process of drying up and healing. And I was aghast to see how her skin looked. And I said, I, I told you to call me. She said, I, I haven't had any pain. None at all. And she reached over and touched it and rubbed it like this. She said, it itches and my clothing hangs on it but it doesn't hurt. She had actually gone to the urgent care center to see if this was something very serious and they told her it was. Here's some pain medication and she said, I, won't, I don't need it. So that was very interesting to catch one within 24 hours and treat it and shut it down by using this protocol. Didn't photograph that one. Wish I had. The second case was a 58 year old <coughs> male, white. He had the classic rash and I do have pictures of him across the back wrapping around on the front. Pain was pretty severe. He had suffered with that for six days. The next case, she had gone to work, so she was pretty much out of commission, and her pain level was quite high. This was the male I was telling you about. Now, he gave me a VAS score, a pain level of six, but he was a lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps, so I think that was a modified six. That looks like a 10 in my book. It would be a 10 on me. But you can see the classes. This is the classic rash. This is his uh, thorax, spine right over through here, wrapping around. He's got the blisters, he's got the redness, and the pain as well. I treated him one time for the five minutes. He had a pain reduction immediately, and his pain was level zero in one hour. And this is what it looked like 24 hours later. Significant improvement, zero pain. This is the female patient, the 65 year old, note the date. She's got the classic blisters, the rash in through here, again unable to wear the undergarments. I want you to notice these shiny spots and how tight these blisters are. Pay close attention to that and the area of redness in through here because there's some changes on the next slide where you can see these are becoming wrinkled and they can collapse and begin to dry out. There's less redness all in through here. I'll cut back to that other slide for just a moment, let you drink that in. So we have the shiny blisters. 24 hours after one five minute treatment, I treated her again. This is on the 14th. You can see the blisters dried up. The skin is breaking away much less redness in through here. Healing is taking place. She thought she was cured because she had zero pain. Absolutely zero pain. And the last slide here on the 17th, marked improvement, still zero pain, doing well. Also too in this series, I've tried to offer minimalistic treatments. I wanted to do just a little bit to see how the patient responded, not to carry on. I released these patients very, very quickly. The first one I talked about, the lady that had the one vesicle, her pain level was a three pre-treatment. It was zero after the treatment. When I saw her again after the weekend, zero. I didn't even treat her a second time. When I saw how much she had, had gotten relief and pain, I said, I'm gonna back away and see what occurs with this. If she relapses, if she has a problem, if it picks up another dermatome, I will carry on from that but I wanted to be minimalistic in this and enter as little as I could to see what kind of effect we were going to get. The second treatment, the combat marine, his pain level was a six. Post-treatment, his VAS score was a two. 
An hour later, he called the office back and said he was completely pain free and he knew it would come back as soon as he hung the phone up because Murphy was going to get him. It didn't. He continued on. I saw him a day afterwards, still a VAS of zero. I opted not to treat him again. I got the effect that I was after. I'm going to step back as a clinician and see what the body does. The next one, her pain level was a 10, three post treatment an hour later, zero. I treated her 10 times on this course here, and the final was a zero. One of the questions I'm going to ask in presenting this is, why didn't you continue on? Why didn't you do some wound healing frequencies or ever on? Again, I wanted to be minimalistic. Just start out and treat this and back away and see what the body did. I didn't adjust or do any other therapies at all. So in each case, profound improvement. Uh, I'm continuing to collect data and also working on some uh, PHN cases, some as long as eight years and recording data on that. Um, I want to test different approaches as well, especially for the chronic cases, possibly using some treatments to the stellate ganglion, some of the Oshiro's pain treatments as well. So uh, word has kind of gotten out and I'm having some patients show up and it's really exciting to uh, treat those. Um, this suggests that super pulse low level laser therapy combined with LED and static magnetic can be an effective treatment for herpes zoster. And uh, some randomized control can be really nice with some sham lasers and things <coughs> along those lines. But the, the promise for acute looks very, very good at this stage. And that's my conclusion. Thank you.